Ken here again with you. Uh, we're in lesson six, part three, AC power. And uh, we're now going to look more specifically at AC power and how reactive power, true power and apparent power interact with each other. So we've discovered that resistive power resistance dissipates true power. So the power is being turned into either rotational energy, heat energy, light energy, all kinds of things, but resistance dissipates true power. A reactance consumes reactive power. And that might be a little bit misleading there when we say consumes reactive power because it consumes it and releases it back to the circuit. Consumes it and releases it back to the circuit. It doesn't do any actual useful work. So the phasor addition of true power and reactive power gives us what we call apparent power. And that was the power triangle that we looked at. This is the power that seems to be taken from our supply. So apparent power, if you remember, I'll just draw our power triangle here. Our power triangle is basically a phasor diagram where we have true power. We use the letter P on the horizontal and we have reactive power and we use the letter Q here. And if we do a phasor addition, that's basically closing the horizontal of the triangle, we end up with apparent power. Apparent power. And we use the letter S to represent apparent power. So our next step is to work out where our power triangle actually comes from. So let's have a look at uh, our power triangle and it can be derived from the voltage triangle. So if we go back to our um, standard single phase circuits, we have the voltage across the resistance always on the horizontal, the voltage across the inductor, in this case for RL, so power triangle for RL. I suppose that's important to note that we're doing a resistor and an inductor to start with. And if we do the phasor addition between voltage across the resistor and across the inductor, it's simply a matter of closing the triangle and the hypotenuse is the phasor addition and the angle to the from the horizontal to the uh, hypotenuse is the phase angle. If we take our voltage trends, uh, trends um, triangle, getting my transistors and my triangles mixed up, our triangle, and we multiply each of those by the current, if you remember, and I'm sure you do, but I'll spell it out again. Power equals the voltage multiplied by the current. So simple Ohm's law. So if I simply take the current measured and the applied voltage, I'm going to get this one, the apparent power. If I take the voltage across the inductor by the current through the inductor, that's this one, I'm going to get reactive power. And if I take the current through the resistor and the voltage across the resistor, this one, I'm going to get true power. So all we're simply doing is multiplying current by voltage and we get S. We multiply current 
and voltage across the resistor only we get true power and if we multiply the voltage by the current through the reactor itself be it capacitive or anything else in this case it's inductive we get Q so that's our power triangle and that's how we have got to our power triangle even though we'd already introduced you to true power reactive power and apparent power that's how we get there simply a transition from the voltage triangle multiplied by the current gives us the power triangle in this particular case the power triangle for an inductor and a resistor in series and yes you've probably guessed it we're now going to do the same in a moment for the power of the other direction but first we're going to do the maths for the equations around that power triangle so true power P is the voltage through the resistance so let me get my pen up and running true power this one here this one here true power is equal to the voltage across the resistor multiplied by the current through the resistor now the reason I've gone first equation is there's two ways to work this out well there's two possible equations we can use this is the Ohm's law version you may not have the voltage across the resistor so you may have to use another equation but if you have the voltage across the resistor and the current through the resistor you can use simple Ohm's law and it will equal P obviously voltage through the resistor and current in the resistor so our first equation for true power is power equals the voltage multiplied by the cross the resistance multiply the current through any resistance in a purely resistive AC circuit you'll remember the phase angle between the supply voltage and the current is always zero so we're thinking about the effects on the phase angle we've just worked out how the powers worked out how do we work out the phase angle in an AC circuit with reactants the phase angle is no longer zero and increases as the reactive power increases and we call the cosine of this angle the power factor in a resistive circuit the power factor is always one because the cos of zero degrees is one so I'll draw a couple of power diag power triangles to kind of demonstrate what I'm saying if our true power P is the same as Q here you're going to get a 45 degree angle in here that's simple geometry you're going to get 45 degrees in here so your power factor is the cos of 45 now I guarantee you the cos of 45 is 0.5 so a line at 45 being halfway between 90 degrees and in this direction 0 degrees there's our 45 it's halfway and we're going to end up the cos of the angle is 
is going to be zero. I get my point there, 0.5. If my triangle looks more like this, where I have a lot of R and only a tiny bit of Q, my angle in here might only be say two degrees for example and that would put me at about zero point nine well probably closer to zero point nine five to be honest so again here's my ninety degrees And down here is my zero degrees. So my hypotenuse is almost the same as my adjacent angle. And lastly, what if I have a triangle that looks more like this? So I've got lots of Q, only a small amount of R, and my hypotenuse is getting closer and closer to nearly vertical. If there is no R, it gets vertical. So if I had no R, my triangle would be straight up and down like that. So small amount of R, and I get heaps and heaps of Q. Therefore, my 90 degrees comes up here. And I'm going to get a power factor for an angle up here, probably in the order of about 0 0.1. So if my if my Q is very low to my R, I'm going to end up with a high power factor. If my Q is high and my R is low, I'm going to end up with a low power factor. So that's what we're saying. In a resistive circuit, the power factor is 1 because everything is on the horizontal. Power vector equals 1 because everything's on the horizontal. No phase angle. But soon as I start to get this kind of thing happening where I've got a lot of Q in the circuit, then this angle here, theta, starts to grow and it's going to be a number between 0 one. So if it's on the horizontal, as we just said here, power factor equals one. If it ends up being totally vertical, then the power factor would be zero. So depending on the slope of the curve, the steeper the hypotenuse is, the closer to zero, therefore power factor is terrible at uh, zero or something close to it when the when they're both in line with each other purely resistive we end up with a power factor down here at power factor of one okay second equation true power can also be the voltage applied by the current applied multiplied by the cos of the angle so again, it's a little power triangle coming into, into play, but we're now using some trigonometry to work out the true power.
So that's why I've called it the second equation. True power, P, taken by any circuit, is the production of the voltage and the current multiplied by the power factor. So again, I'll draw the little triangle, see if I can make it clear for you. This one here is just simply volts times current, right? But if I want to find this one here, that is true power, then all I do is I multiply the volts and the amps, which is that bit, by the cos of theta, so the cos of the angle, which is that bit, and it gives me the true power, which is this side of the triangle. That's all we're doing, nice and simple. It's just trigonometry. So power is VI, volts, amps, cos theta, cos of the, of the angle. So to reiterate that again, volts, amps, by itself is what we would call apparent power. But to get this side of the triangle, we're simply going to use some trigonometry multiplied by the cos of the angle. That's the theta through here. And it's going to give us the this side of the triangle, which is P. So what about reactive power now? You can see we've changed the colour to try and make it a bit more interesting for you and to remember. And there's also two equations for this one. So the reactive power, we're using the symbol Q. You can see it here all over the place. Is the product of the current flowing through the reactive component of the circuit and the voltage across the component measured in volt amps or volts amps reactive and we often abbreviate that to just simply VAR VAR volts amps reactive and again as long as you know what the voltage through the inductor is and the current through the inductor then you can get the Q so Q is reactive power measured in volts, amps, reactive. So it's volts, amps, reactive. So Q is always in V, A, volts, amps, R for reactive, VAR. The second equation again just uses some trigonometry. There's another way to work out the Q. Remember here's our power triangle. I'll just go back to the right slide. Get my pointer, here we go. Remember, this is the volts and the amps on this side, the VA. Here's the angle, theta. This time, we want to find out this side. The Q. And, again, trigonometry. The volts times the amps multiplied by the sine of theta will give us the Q. So, again, here's our volts, amps. That's that component. Here's the angle. It's that component. And we multiply by the sine of the angle to give us the Q. 
nothing tricky, just using a little bit of trigonometry around right angle triangles. So we can take the VA and calculate the Q. Now the next one is apparent power. And again, there's only one equation for apparent power because it's just simply the voltage multiplied by the current. So again, let's do our power triangle. Remember, true power on this side, P, reactive power, Q, and the apparent power, S. So the S is simply the applied voltage and the supply current. That's the thing to remember, the V and the I is always supply voltage, supply current. And that is this side of the triangle. It's all you need to remember. So apparent power S is just the current multiplied by the voltage and the units we use are VA. And you'll find that all transformers I use the abbreviation TX for transformers. All transformers and all generators are rated in volt amps because that's the worst case scenario. The hypotenuse of the triangle is always the worst case scenario. So the hypotenuse is always as big or bigger than Q, or as big or bigger than P. Therefore, S is always worst case scenario, and we always size our transformers and our generators for worst case scenario. So that's why we use the apparent power, or the S, for doing that. So let's do a little worked example. Let's do some algebra now. And here we have an ex a little example. Let's, let's just look at the, uh, the example quickly. And we have an AC motor that takes 10 amps from a 230 volt 50 hertz supply. The phase angle between the motor current and the supply is 20 degrees lagging. And we want to work out what the true power taken by the motor is, the reactive power taken by the motor, and the apparent power. So the stuff that actually does the work, the reactive power that stores and releases energy, and the overall apparent power that looks like how much it's being taken. So the solution, the values they give us is the current, the voltage, and the phase angle. So straight away, we can work out the true power. If you remember, true power, our second equation, power equals VI, the volts amps, multiplied by the cos of the angle. So they've only told us the supply current and the supply voltage and the angle. So VI cos theta, so 230 multiplied by 10 and the cos of 20 is 0.95. So you multiply by 0.95 and here's the answer. We have 2000 162 watts in our system. Next, calculate the Q. Again, they've given us the volt amps and all we need is the sine of the angle. So Q is equal to the volt amps multiplied by the sine. So 230 times 10, the sine of 20 degrees is 0.34, giving us a Q of 786.6 volt, amps, reactive, or VAR. And what is the, calculating the, the apparent power, it's just the volts times the amps, nice and easy, 230 times 10, 
is 2300 now you'll notice straight away that the apparent power s is bigger than the other two remember from the previous slide that is why transformers and generators are always rated in volt amps again looking at our triangle let's do the triangle we have our s on this side our q on this side and our p on this side the s is always the biggest always if we've got no Q, if Q doesn't exist, then the S and the P will be the same. If the other way around, let's say we have P, Q and S, and let's say there's no P, P's done away with, then S and Q would be equal. It's just the way a triangle has to work. So let's have another look at another quick example. Here we're going to use a little bit of uh, Pythagoras. A circuit is taking 2 kilowatts of true power. It's got 600 VAR reactive. How much apparent power is being taken? As I always say to my students, let's draw the power diagram first. So let's uh, get my little pointer up and running. And uh, there's my pen. Right, so here's our power triangle. I won't draw it to scale. They tell us the circuit is taking true power. So we know we have two kilowatts here. We have an apparent power of 600 volts, amps, reactive, VAR. So there's our two sides of the triangle. And we simply want to find the third side of the triangle, which is the S or the apparent power. So we can simply go P squared plus Q squared, take the square root of the whole lot, and we end up with 2000 squared plus 600 squared, take the square root of that, we end up with an S, which is this side of the triangle, at 2088 volt amps don't forget to put the units in that's the volt amps so there you've had a couple of worked examples on how we can calculate and um, use true power to find apparent power we can use apparent power to find reactive power as long as we have at least two sides of the triangle or we have one side and one angle and we can use trigonometry.